Oh, you want some drama for this upcoming election season? Not a lot of uh, nail-biter races, a few, but not that many. But big picture here in Albany, um, people will be counting votes late here. I'm talking not about the governor's race here and even some of the statewide stuff. I'm talking about the fight for the control of the state Senate. Andrew, you got a preview here, and I know you're going to bring up the letters IDC. I, I am, but we'll try to keep this digestible, Rich. Republicans currently control the state Senate thanks to better numbers and that power-sharing deal with a group of breakaway Democrats known as the IDC. Republican votes outnumber Democrats 30 to 26 right now, and with 32 seats needed for a majority, every close race for the state Senate will matter come November 1st. On top of that, there are some toss-up or otherwise very close races across the area that bear watching. In the 40th district in the Hudson Valley, there's a tight race to replace Senator Greg Ball. And there are several races on Long Island. In Suffolk County, incumbent Philip Boyle won by five points two years ago. In Nassau, Camp Hannon won by just 4% two years ago. Then there's the race involving Dave Denenberg, who quit the race last month after he was accused of stealing from his law firm. But Denenberg is still on the ballot, so state Republicans are spending money on ads to try to send their man, Michael Vendito, to Albany. That $1.5 million ad buy also covers the District 3 race, where Lee Zeldin is not running, so he can run for Congress. And Republicans are also spending on the race in District 7 in Nassau, pinning incumbent Jack Martins against Democrat Adam Haber, who ran for Nassau executive last year. The other key to the state Senate come Election Day is those with the breakaway Democrats, the IDC, the people now sharing power with Republicans. They promised to cross lines and work with Democrats again, but if their bloc once again could sway the balance of power, no one's entirely sure what that group will do. The five current IDC members in the state Senate are all running. All are expected to win their re-election races, and there could be up to three new IDC members depending on how election night plays out. Democrat Simka Felder already works with the GOP. Mark Grisanti is running upstate. And then there's another race on Long Island with Jesse Hamilton, who said he'll join the IDC if they work with Democrats. Why is this important? Why does the IDC impact when it, w the agenda for what happens come the fall? Well, because some big issues that Governor Cuomo is pushing for, and the state Senate could be the swing, for example, on fracking. Governor Cuomo may want to uh, allow it or ban it, and the state Senate will have some say on that. Same with Tappan Zee Bridge funding and tolls influencing how the bridge is paid for. It could even help decide if the state resumes corruption investigations, picking up where the now disbanded Moreland Commission left off. Rich? Do you think it matters a lot if the IDC continues to be the swing, um, or in a funny way, they're getting stuff done. Maybe you, Democrats aren't always crazy about all of it, but it, it seems to at least be functioning more. What's better for the public to have kind of three groups in Albany or should they be Republicans and Democrats? Well, I, I think it absolutely matters. Uh, it's not about the IDC. It's about whether the Democrats control the agenda of the state Senate. You know, I was a counsel to the state Democrats in the Albany in the Senate for four years. When you control the agenda, that means you decide what bills can be voted on. A higher minimum wage. They're blocking it. We need it. We need it now. We have a bill that is inadequate, a law that is inadequate. Mm -hmm. The governor has promised to work with the Democrats to take control because the agenda matters. It's not some neutral, we're all equal and we balance each other out. If we want to do good things for our state, we need people in charge of the floor, in other words, of the voting process that can decide what bills. Yeah. Minimum wage, uh, the 10-point women's equality agenda, these things were blocked by the prior... Uh, but, Mike, can it be fair to say that the governor himself has enabled the IDC and, and privately probably likes the fact um, that it gets to play one off the other here? He likes to be, let's say, moderate, at least on fiscal issues, and then progressive on social issues. So he doesn't mind the fact you know, he can work with Dean Skelis and the IDC and he keeps things uh, the way they are right well, now. Well, look, I think look, there's one thing the governor's been very successful at doing is making people look up to Albany and say, it's actually starting to work a little bit again. That being said, I think the governor also realizes that he's made it very clear, which is why he's campaigning to make sure that Democrats take a majority and that the IDC works with Democrats in the Senate. That there were, as the Assemblywoman said, there were major progressive issues that got held up because of the who controls the agenda. At the IDC's arrangement with the Republican Republican caucus of the Senate was predicated on they have to agree on what comes to the eighth floor and what didn't they agree on. They didn't agree on all ten points of the women's equality agenda. They didn't agree on uh, the New York version of the DREAM Act. Uh, they don't agree on the minimum wage. And so the governor said, look, you know, we need a functioning state Senate, but we also need to make sure that the progressive issues that most New Yorkers care about can be enacted. And since it looks like the mm -hmm. arrangement that existed between the IDC and the GOP can't get that done, well then we need to put Democrats solidly in charge. 
do you think the governor deserves though, a little bit of criti criticism here? Before Moreland, he was pretty happy with the arrangement, and then with all the criticism now, uh, now all of a sudden, you know, Dean Skelos is in his BFF? I, I don't. I think that any governor, Democrat or Republican, that can make the dysfunctional world of Albany work deserves credit. So I, I don't I don't blame him. Uh, there, there are certain. See, we're not being. We're not being realistic about this. There are certain deals you got to cut in politics. Sometimes your your worst critic, you've got to deal with that individual. Well, if you, get if the you want to see something get done, but if the Democrats get the majority, but then you don't have to. You I know. mean, no one is saying. I think I, for one, give great credit to the governor for getting things done. I think there is a perception this guy gets things done, but he is a realistic person and realizes that this prior arrangement has stood in the way. Forget the word progressive of things that ordinary people want and are voting for a higher minimum wage, 10, all 10 points of the Women's Equality Act. I think he recognizes this is the way to move his agenda forward. And I don't criticize him for the past. I think moving ahead, he's made his, his views known. He wants the Democrats to control the Senate, and he's committed to spending his money for it. That's what he says. Yes. But the governor really only took an interest in this when it affected him personally, when he needed to win the Working Families Party line. Uh, in the primary season that we just had. And, and the IDC is probably going to be larger than it was this last go-round. It's going to be interesting to see if he actually continues to put emphasis on getting them to work with Democrats, even if it's politically sticky for him. I, I think you can't underestimate. Governor Cuomo can handle sticky. And I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I am confident mm -hmm. that he can put Senator Andre Stewart-Cousins and Senator Jeff Klein in a room together and make a coalition that will actually do good things for the people of New I'd York. I feel very in strong. In that room. Uh, <laughs> coming up next, Mayor de Blasio sticking to his guns, backing Rachel Nordlinger. Bill de Blasio saying, leave her family out of the spotlight, but Mayor saying family being off limits here, is that a little hypocritical? We'll talk about that after this.